Hello, I'm Jeff McNeil, and this is my review of Monster Hunter World. As a fully customizable member of the Hunter Guild's 5th research fleet, you find yourself on a newly discovered continent after following the Elder Crossing, a strange phenomenon where numerous Elder Dragons cross the ocean every couple decades. In a new land with countless unknown dangers and wonders, it's your goal to learn the secrets of this new land and the mysteries of the Elder Crossing. The story is a mite better than the average Monster Hunter, yet it's let down by annoying or bland characters and far too much dialogue. And cutscenes. Lot of cutscenes. The premise sounds exciting. You know, brand new land, brand new monsters, but trips over itself every step of the way. The game also suffers from severe faffing about issues. There is a quest fairly early on where you spend the first 10 minutes slowly escorting a cart and annoying talking researchers across the desert. Yes, you eventually get to hunt, fight, hunt a monster, but it takes way too long to get there. And later on, you'll be scanning the different areas looking for mysterious monster tracks only to discover that it's a monster that's been in the series for years. And for some reason, they couldn't identify it. For whatever reason. And this is only the start. The entire game is filled with long stretches where you aren't hunting to progress. You're wasting time until the game decides that you've been a good boy or girl and get to move on. It's... Absolutely infuriating when you have to deal with layer upon layer of boring research and tracking to reach an obvious hunt. Seriously, half of the mysterious monsters in this game are returning monsters. There's, there's no mystery. Visually, the game is a treat. It's, it's dark and raining and misty right now, so you can't really see, but yeah, it's a very, very pretty game. And it looks better than any monster hunter has ever looked before from a technical standpoint, with the very particle effects from monster attacks being the highlight. Breath, you know, fire and breath attacks, thunder, lightning, all of that just looks fantastic. That said, this graphical fidelity has the unfortunate effect of making anything even remotely cartoony or colorful stand out like a sore thumb. My character has bright purple hair. She's wearing a helmet right now, so you can't see, but she has bright purple hair. And you could pick her out in a crowd of thousands. In previous games, the graphics weren't the best, so the more absurd aspects of the game's visual design weren't out of place. Monsters were outlandishly colorful and strangely designed, armor was wild and weapons were all unique in design. While very beautiful, the game's overall visual design doesn't cr does come across as somewhat bland. It's just really, really safe. I mean, it, it's pretty, it's nice. It's boring, for the most part. The sound and music is also a step down from previous games. Yeah, there's no music right now. The monster battle themes, besides one or two exceptions, fall far below the standard set before. It's not an outright awful soundtrack, but it isn't up to the series standards. And believe me, Monster Hunter has some great music. Just not this one. Couple themes in his, you know, two, maybe three, but yeah, it's... it is kind of bland. And for the first time, or, or second if you count Monster Hunter stories... We have full voice acting the series, and it ranges from the great and colorful to I want to throw you off a mountain into a pit of devil Joe, which is actually a volcano, which is Dire Morales, in a volcano. The Admiral, met late in the game, is everything wonderful in the Monster Hunter series. He's over the top, loud, and knows that after a tough hunt, you just want to come back and eat until you explode. Then we have the Handler, your quest assistant. The old marm, she is not. Sweet freaking mercy, this woman is the single worst thing ever introduced in the series. She never shuts up, constantly tells you what to do, and if you have a story quest or event she wants you to do, she will remind you after every single hunt to do it. And of course, 
That's with full voice acting, so you can't skip it. Oh, she is so infuriating. The overall sound design is weak and borders on downright intrusive and annoying. The Handler. Nowhere near previous entries in quality. The gameplay is more or less the basics of Monster Hunter. You have a dodge button, two attack buttons, generally a vertical and a horizontal, though in this case it's a charge. And a special button. In my case, it's my big swing or blocking. But every weapon has a different function. The basics are generally simple to figure out, but the execution is where the games get difficult. Learning positioning and combo strings is as rewarding as ever been. And the feeling of landing a huge hit on a towering beast is euphoric. The game introduces several new combat options, such as the slinger which I don't actually have any ammo for, it, you, you basically use it instead of throwing things. So instead of throwing rocks... Oh, here we go. So in, instead of throwing rocks, you shoot rocks. Instead of throwing dung bombs, you shoot dung shots. Instead of flash bombs, you get flash pods. Y you get the idea. Slide attacks. When you can go downhill, you can... Slide on your butt and do a really cool attack and environmental traps. So you can find like poison flowers, you can dr smack them and poison oozes out to damage enemies. Um, certain frogs found in the area release poison gas capable of paralyzing monsters. You can drop rocks on their head. All are very welcome additions. I just wish it didn't come at the cost of the Monster Hunter series more interesting combat options. Hunter arts and hunter styles introduced in Monster Hunter Generations are absent, replaced with mantles like this one, which grant passive bonuses for a small duration, or a healing fountain, which is basically the hunter's oasis from Monster Hunter Generation, which lasts for a minute and runs on a cooldown. These hunter tools are nice, but a far cry from the variety and options the arts and styles provided. Prowler mode is also absent, which allowed you to play as one of your customizable palicos in Monster Hunter Generation. And palico skill customization has been drastically torn apart. It hasn't been altered, it is neutered. You can find different palico gadgets throughout your adventure, and each represents one of the old proficiencies yet you can only take one on a hunt. These gadgets are all quite useful and level up at, with usage, but there are only six. It's ultimately a shadow replacement for the unique palicos you could have once made. And that's unfortunately a reoccurring problem with the game. Outside of the graphical upgrade, which has some issues of its own, and some very quality, very pleasing quality of life changes, previous entries in the series have simply done what World does better. Many features and variety in both monsters and player capabilities are missing from World. The new monsters are all are a varied bunch, with some being less inspired versions of previous monsters. The first large monster you fight in this game is basically a lame great jaggy. Sorry, not a lame great jaggy. A, a lame royal ludroth. Yeah, it's a royal ludroth. Um, to some unique and fun battles with cool designs. There are some cool monsters here. The returning monsters are all very safe choices. I mean, you can see these monsters coming from a mile away. Now, while the new areas are certainly bigger, and believe me, this is a massive area, with no load times, mind you, I'm not sure they're better. The Ancient Forest, this place, is a complete mess of a map that almost requires the waypoint system to navigate. A series of long, twisting, and overlapping passages between open arenas that used to just be loading screens away. It's, it's a complete mess. It really is. I mean, if you look, look at this. Just look at this. I'll, I'll turn off all the little things and just look at this. And then there are multiple levels of it. This is... This is unbelievable. Later areas are a little easier to navigate, but can still consist of long passages of mostly nothing 
between open arenas, and you aren't going to find or fight monsters in these little passages. If you try and fight them, they will walk away from you to one of the open arenas. Finally, for the first time since Monster Hunter Tri in 2009, Monster Hunter's online system requires additional fees and accounts to access. Because of this, I personally haven't spent any time online, but the game spends every moment it can to push for the online system. As long as you have an active network, even if you don't have an online account, it forces you to either join or make an online lobby. You can't just play single player. You have to be online as long as your PlayStation 4's network is active. You have no choice. When you go to begin a quest, if you don't have an online account, a window pops up telling you you can't access online. Despite the fact that when you load the start the game up for the first time, if you don't have PlayStation Plus, it says, Oh, you don't have PlayStation Plus. You can't access online. And finally, when you actually get your quest together, even if your network is turned off, the game still forces a party check after an obnoxious load time to make sure that everyone is ready to play. So, you get your quest, you don't just go to the gate anymore and begin your quest. You have to wait for the game to think about it for 20 to 30 seconds and say, Oh! Okay, everyone get ready! It is incredibly intrusive and obnoxious and drove me nuts, and has no right to be as badly designed as it is. Overall, Monster Hunter World is a visual treat, with large open areas to hunt in and some great quality of night life changes and the solid gameplay of the series is known for. Seriously, the amount of information available to the player um, in both, like, monster records. Let, let me just bring this up real quick. Do, 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 do. The amount of things you can see what they're vulnerable to, what elements they're weak, what they drop, what they break. It is so much information. The shops are more user-friendly than they've ever been. Just really, really great quality of life changes. Unfortunately, this jump to the next generation console has left the series catalog of monsters and equipment in the dust. The sound design and voice acting can be painful to deal with. It drops hunter art styles and prowlers as well. The online system, even when not online, is intrusive, is intrusive and the somewhat compelling story is destroyed by the annoying characters. I want to like this game. I really, really do. But previous Monster Hunter games, especially the Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate and Monster Hunter Generation on the 3DS, are simply better experiences. If you don't care about the graphic quality, it is hard to recommend this. So, it's not a bad game. And it's not even really a bad Monster Hunter game. It's got a lot of potential in the series. But it has so far to go to catch up. It's absolutely not funny. So, this has been Jeff McNeil. I hope you enjoyed this review. And I will see you next time.